Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, it is a great pleasure for me to have an opportunity to talk in uh, Open Source Summit Japan today. Uh, I am Kondo Kazuhiro from IBM Japan, and I talk about my work in an open source Java virtual machine, OpenJ9, adding support for a new processor architecture to it. Uh, I'm speaking live and I speak in English in this session. I have to show uh, this page and the next page uh, by the rule of my company and disclaimers and uh, notices for the trademarks. Okay, <clears throat> uh, let me start with uh, who I am. Uh, I am a software engineer at the software development organization in IBM Japan. <clears throat> I joined the company in 1995 and I have been working on porting and delivering uh, IBM Java to embedded systems for nearly 20 years. Uh, my target devices include uh, printers, vending machines, and car navigation systems, for example. Uh, a certain percentage of you may have consumer devices uh, at your home uh, with IBM Java internally uh, or had such devices in the past without knowing that. Although uh, I cannot mention the name of the products I have worked on. I became a committer of two open source projects Eclipse OpenJ9 and Eclipse OMR a uh, year ago. Uh, I will talk about the open source projects uh, in the following pages. Uh, today's agenda looks like this. Uh, I am going to talk about OpenJ9 and my work uh, in the OpenJ9 project to add uh, support for AX64 Linux. Let me start with uh, OpenJ9. <clears throat> uh, Eclipse OpenJ9 project was created uh, three years ago uh, in 2017. It is an implementation of Java Virtual Machine. It originates from IBM's J9 virtual machine. So the name is uh, OpenJ9 now uh, after open sourced. J9, uh, IBM's own Java virtual machine implementation is a proven and enterprise grade Java implementation. It has been the core of IBM Java SDKs for many years and has been available uh, bundled in IBM software, such as WebSphere application server. IBM Java SDK supports systems with uh, power architecture and IBM's uh, mainframe system Z, uh, as well as x86, Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Uh, J9 was open sourced three years ago to reach developers outside of IBM. And IBM Java SDK now uses OpenJ9 as its core. Uh, you can see the advantages of OpenJ9 over other uh, Java VM implementation uh, at the OpenJ9 project site. Uh, that includes uh, fast startup and smaller footprint. And 
OpenJ9 is also uh, cloud aware. Uh, that means it is optimized for use in containers. Uh, OpenJ9 has technologies uh, called uh, shared classes and AOT. Uh, AOT is ahead of time compilation. Uh, they contribute to uh, faster startup. Uh, please visit the project website for more details uh, of the advantages of OpenJ9. Uh, I'd like to talk about the structure of OpenJ9 here. Uh, OpenJ9 is an implementation of Java Virtual Machine. Uh, you may know that uh, there is another Java Virtual Machine uh, that originates from uh, Sun and Oracle, uh, which is called Hotspot. Uh, there is an uh, open source project called OpenJDK. And Hotspot uh, is a virtual machine developed in the OpenJDK project. Uh, you can see it on the right side of this page. And Hotspot is not the only component uh, in the uh, OpenJDK project. Uh, you can see the OpenJDK class library uh, in the box above. Uh, IBM has been collaborating with Oracle uh, in the OpenJDK project for the class library uh, since uh, 2000, 2010. And IBM has used the OpenJDK class library uh, in IBM Java SDKs. Uh, our Java runtime uh, combines the OpenJDK class library and the OpenJ9 virtual machine, uh, replacing the hotspot virtual machine in OpenJDK. Uh, you can see it in the left side of the page. Uh, there's the uh, Eclipse OpenJ9 uh, Java virtual machine uh, at the bottom, and on top of on top of it is. Uh, OpenJDK class library, and there is adapter code uh, that bridges uh, between OpenJ9 VM and the class library. Uh, this structure is basically the same uh, as it used to be with uh, IBM Java SDK uh, before open sourced. Going on to the next page, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, OpenJ9 and OMR. Uh, when J9 uh, virtual machine was open sourced, uh, it was divided into two projects. Uh, one is Eclipse OpenJ9 and the other is Eclipse OMR. Uh, Eclipse OMR is a project uh, that implements language independent uh, runtime uh, technologies. Uh, that includes uh, garbage collection and, and compiler and porting layers. Uh, the components in OMR can be used to build other languages uh, such as Python and Ruby. Uh, there are uh, implementations uh, of such uh, languages based on OMR. Uh, please don't ask me uh, what OMR uh, stands for. Uh, it used to be an acronym of something, but uh, uh, it is now uh, OMR is OMR. Uh, Eclipse OpenJ9 project builds on top of OMR, uh, focusing on the 
Java Virtual Machine uh, implementation and the Java specific part of the components. So uh, you can see uh, the compiler code resides in both projects. Uh, in the uh, OMR side, uh, the compiler component is the infrastructure for building compilers. Uh, in the OpenGen side, uh, it implements the Java specific part of the uh, Java JIT compiler. Now uh, I am moving to the topic of uh, AX64. Uh, it is uh, sometimes uh, called as uh, ARM64 or uh, ARMv8A, uh, but uh, uh, those words uh, sometimes uh, have slightly different meanings, but uh, 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 I mix uh, the use of AX64 and ARM64 uh, uh, in this slice. Uh, please don't care about that. Uh, AX64 is a 64-bit architecture from ARM, and it was announced in uh, 2011, nine years ago. Uh, ARM has its 32-bit uh, architecture, and that was widely used in embedded devices. But when they introduced 64-bit architecture, uh, they defined a new instruction, instruction set and a register set. Uh, what is important here is that uh, it is not a simple extension uh, from the previous 32-bit architecture, and there is no uh, upper compatibility uh, between the instruction sets. Uh, you can execute 32-bit uh, instructions uh, when you are running in the 64-bit mode of x86 or uh, power architecture, but uh, that is not uh, that that does not apply to ARM. And nowadays, uh, most smartphones and both uh, iPhone and Android uh, run on 64-bit ARM processors. Uh, Japanese supercomputer Fugaku. Uh, uses CPU cores of AX64 architecture with uh, vector extension. You may know uh, Fugaku was number one in the recent top 500 uh, list of supercomputers. And you may also know that uh, Apple started to switch the processor in their Macintosh. Uh, from Intel processors to its own 64-bit uh, ARM processor last month. Uh, as I mentioned in this talk earlier, uh, I belong to a team in IBM Japan that delivers embedded Java solutions to our customers. Uh, it was clear that many of our customers were going to switch uh, from 32-bit ARM to 64-bit ARM in the near future. Uh, that is the reason uh, why our team uh, decided to add 64-bit ARM to the list of supported architectures of OpenJ9 in early uh, 2018. And the target OS is Linux. In supporting the new processor uh, in OpenJ9, uh, the JIT compiler is the key component. 
uh, most of the other components uh, in OpenJ9 are written in C and C++. And you can just run compilers for the target systems to build those components. But uh, the JIT compiler is a compiler. It needs to generate instructions for the target processor. And I will explain uh, what the JIT compiler does later. And <clears throat> by the way, uh, most of the developers of J9 and OpenJ9 in IBM are located in countries like uh, Canada and United Kingdom and India. But uh, I had uh, worked with those developers around the world uh, in uh, 2015. Uh, that was before JNI was open sourced. Uh, uh, I joined uh, the development of uh, IBM Java SDK for 32 bit ARM uh, at that time. And I learned uh, the structure of the JIT compiler and how to debug the JIT compiler at that time. And that ex experiences uh, made it possible for me uh, to work in uh, this project uh, for AX64. Okay. <sighs> Uh, I am the main developer uh, for AX64 support, but uh, I was not the only one. Uh, there are two others uh, from IBM, uh, and also there were uh, nearly 10 students uh, from a Canadian university uh, who are interested in uh, compiler technology. Uh, the students were working with an IBM laboratory in Canada uh, through the program uh, called IBM CAS, uh, Centers for Advanced Studies. Uh, that is a collaboration program uh, of IBM and universities. Uh, we used uh, Slack and, and GitHub and uh, we also had uh, uh, weekly calls uh, to exchange our status. Okay. Uh, development timeline looks like this. Uh, I started uh, the development of uh, uh, by writing code uh, for the compiler in the OMR project uh, in May uh, 2018. Uh, it took me more than half a year to implement functions in the OMR side. Uh, that includes uh, the time for learning the AX64 instruction set and and the JIT compiler structure. Uh, I used uh, single board devices like Raspberry Pis and Jetson Nanos uh, as a development platform. Uh, then I built and enabled the Java bytecode interpreter uh, in the OMR, pro uh, no, no, OpenJ9 project uh, in early 2019. Uh, last year. Uh, by doing this, uh, we were able to run Java programs on AX64 Linux uh, without the JIT compiler at this point. Uh, the JIT compiler development continued in the OpenJ9 site uh, from February last, last year. Uh, that implements the 
uh, Java specific part of the uh, JIT compiler. Uh, that uh, that includes uh, writing uh, runtime routines of the compiler, and uh, that took very long. Okay, it was summer last year when uh, when the JIT compiler first generated uh, instructions uh, for very simple Java methods, uh, just like uh, returning returning a value uh, passed as an argument, uh, shown in the slide. Uh, another IBM developer uh, joined in September uh, to accelerate the development and uh, we were able to run uh, many Java programs with the JIT compiler enabled by November. Then we added support for uh, ahead of time compilation and enabled uh, tests in the nightly builds at the open source project. We spent a couple of months in debugging uh, before we finally released the uh, first release in April this year. Uh, that was uh, JDK 11 only uh, at that time, but uh, we added uh, JDK 8 and 15 in October. Uh, now, uh, I would like to talk a little more detail on what I did, uh, starting with the work for building the Java bytecode interpreter. Uh, it is written in C and C++, and it is uh, highly portable, uh, uh, except that there are some files written in assembly code. Uh, I had to add those files for AX64. As you can see in the file names uh, on the right of this page, uh, uh, those assembly files uh, written in uh, M4 macros. You also need to add uh, configuration files and make files for AX64 and add if def lines for AX64 in many places. I needed to learn how the uh, whole Java runtime was built. Uh, it is a very uh, big uh, system and takes very uh, long time to build. Uh, uh, it took me uh, three weeks in total uh, for adding those files and for debugging the interpreter uh, before it started to work. And it was the interpreter uh, without the JIT compiler. So uh, it is very slow, but uh, you can run Java programs uh, in an AX64 environment. I'd like to talk about the JIT compiler next. Uh, as uh, you may uh, know, uh, JIT is uh, short for uh, just in time, and JIT compilers are popular uh, these days, and they are used not only with Java, but uh, in other environments like JavaScript and .NET and many other uh, languages. In Java, uh, the JIT compiler translates Java bytecode into native instructions at runtime. Uh, look at the simple example on the right side, uh, translating uh, four bytecodes into three native instructions. Uh, in OpenJ9, uh, the JIT compiler is also used for ahead of time compilation. Uh, AOT stores the compiled codes in OpenJ9's uh, shared class cache so that the 
compiled code is reused. The JIT compiler in OpenJ9 is written in C and uh, C++ and assembly code. Now uh, look at the structure of the source tree in this page. Uh, this page focuses on the structure of the compiler directory uh, in OMR. Uh, this is an uh, open uh, OMR project, but uh, uh, OpenJ9 project uh, also has a similar structure in its uh, compiler directory. Uh, on the left side, uh, there are uh, platform dependent, uh, uh, platform independent uh, directories uh, that controls the uh, compiler and uh, that uh, performs uh, optimizing the code. And the boxes on the right side uh, show the uh, platform dependent uh, directories. Uh, OpenJ9 and OMR used to support uh, P, uh, that is power architecture, and X uh, for Intel uh, x86, and Z, uh, that is IBM's mainframe, and there's a box for 32-bit uh, ARM, uh, but uh, the Code for 32-bit uh, ARM is not uh, maintain, maintained actively. Uh, in supporting AX64, we added a new directory here uh, uh, on the right, uh, and we wrote the code uh, in it uh, from scratch. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, AX64 is not upper compatible uh, with 32-bit ARM, and you cannot just extend the uh, existing 32-bit ARM code to support AX64. And this page uh, shows uh, the work items uh, in the uh, JIT compiler development. Uh, on the OMR side, uh, contains the capability of gener generating AX64 instructions and uh, register assignment. Uh, it also has the implementations of more than 300 evaluators. Uh, evaluators are the functions that convert the operations at the uh, intermediate language of OpenJ9 uh, into native instructions. Uh, on the top is uh, the tables of AX64 native instructions, but uh, uh, the initial version of the native instruction table uh, was written by the university students uh, I mentioned in a couple of pages back. The OpenJ9 side uh, of the uh, JIT compiler implements the Java specific uh, part of the compiler uh, that includes evaluators uh, for such as uh, allocating new objects in Java or, or checking uh, uh, types, uh, uh, check test or uh, instance of, uh, uh, that kind of evaluators. Uh, you also need many runtime routines uh, uh, 
and uh, you also need interface uh, with uh, uh, interpreter, Java interpreter. <coughs> uh, we uh, looked at the code uh, uh, in the P and ARM uh, directory uh, as the reference. Uh, uh, when we uh, implemented uh, code for AX64, uh, P and uh, Power and uh, ARM uh, risk processes, and they are more uh, similar to AX64 than the other architectures, uh, x86 and Z. Uh, the size of the uh, code in the AX64 directories uh, of OMR and OpenJ9, uh, nearly uh, 40,000 uh, lines in total uh, after uh, two years and a half of uh, work. Going to the next page. Uh, this page shows the history uh, of my code contribution uh, to the two projects. Uh, on the left side is OMR. Uh, I started uh, working with the compiler code in the OMR side in May uh, 2018 and worked hard uh, toward uh, the end of the year. Then I switched to the OpenJ9 project in early uh, 2019. Uh, I enabled the Java interpreter uh, for AX64 uh, without the Java uh, JIT compiler first, then continued to write code for the JIT compiler. Uh, during that time, I also worked on the OMR side too, because the features uh, in the o uh, OpenJ9 side uh, required uh, some changes in the OMR side. And I was elect to, elected uh, to be a committer of these two projects uh, at the end of uh, last year. And I review and merge uh, pull requests uh, in those projects now. I'd like to talk about the challenges in the development activities in this page. Uh, first, uh, communication uh, with other contributors. Uh, I work in Japan and many work, uh, many other uh, developers in IBM are located in North America and Europe. We had remote meetings weekly, but uh, it is not easy to have real-time communication with other developers uh, because of uh, the time zone difference. Uh, second, uh, it was the uh, first uh, new uh, processor architecture that was added to J9 and OpenJ9 in these uh, more than 15 years. So people in IBM don't remember uh, how to develop the JIT compiler for a new architecture from scratch. The structure of the uh, JIT and the features of the JIT compiler is much different uh, from uh, those in early uh, 2000. Uh, some people in the compiler technologies uh, have already left the company uh, since that time. And we have uh, design documents of the JIT compiler uh, in IBM, but they are too old and the code has changed uh, since uh, they were implemented. So 
I had to read the code uh, of other architectures uh, like Power and 32-bit ARM uh, for understanding uh, what this uh, function does and what that function does, uh, how this function, that path uh, relates to each other. So I needed to understand uh, not only the AX64 instructions, but the instructions of other architectures. Another problem was the computing resource. The number of the AX64 servers uh, available in the project were uh, limited and they are used for uh, daily uh, uh, CI builds and, and nightly builds for testing. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I used uh, Raspberry, uh, Raspberry Pi and other single board uh, computers uh, for my uh, development target. Uh, I had to use them uh, because of uh, those uh, limited computing resources. Uh, building the OpenGen 9 uh, runtime on Raspberry Pis takes very long. Uh, nearly one hour on uh, Raspberry Pi 4. So I usually uh, cross-build uh, the runtime on x86 Linux to save time. Okay. This page shows the history of the performance improvement. Uh, it is relative uh, speed up compared to the interpreter uh, in early 19, uh, 2019. Uh, when the first release was made in Naples this year, uh, only the low-level uh, optimization was enabled in the JIT compiler because uh, we wanted to focus on the stability in that release. And the performance uh, at that time was around five times faster than the interpreter. After that, in May and June and this year, we enabled uh, compiler optimization at higher levels, uh, which includes our technique called recompilation. The July release is faster than the interpreter by 16 times. We are implementing uh, more work items in the JIT compiler to improve the performance now. The next page uh, shows the comparison of uh, memory sizes of uh, OpenJ9 and uh, Hotspot uh, running uh, Open Liberty uh, web, web server. Uh, uh, I said uh, that the smaller footprint is uh, one of the advantages of OpenJ9. As I uh, measured uh, the uh, memory size uh, that is in VMRSS uh, uh, resident uh, memory size, uh, uh, OpenJ9 is 20, 21% smaller uh, compared to the other JVM implementation. Okay, I'd like to talk about uh, our future work. Uh, to be uh, honest, uh, the AX64 build of OpenJ9 is not as optimized as three other uh, platforms, uh, P and X and Z at this point. So uh, we have many work items 
to be implemented uh, for better performance. Uh, that includes uh, method call improvement and inlining uh, recognized Java methods, such as uh, array copy. Uh, that is uh, one of, uh, example. Also, we need to catch up uh, with new features uh, that will be in new versions of JDK. Uh, we now support uh, JDK 8, 11, and 15, and uh, 8 and 11 uh, long-term support uh, versions. Uh, JDK 16 and 17 will be coming in next year, and JDK 17 will be the next long-term uh, support version. And we are also interested in supporting Apple Silicon Mac. But, uh, we found that uh, supporting uh, Apple Silicon Macs is not very easy. Uh, the JIT needs to be changed because Apple introduced a new restriction with the uh, permissions of allocated memory for security reasons. Uh, by the way, uh, there are some people uh, in the OpenJ9 community who are working to enable the JIT compiler for RISC V. Uh, the OpenJ9 bytecode interpreter uh, for RISC V is already working and nightly builds are available. And they're working toward uh, enabling a JIT compiler, and I am helping them uh, to implement the JIT, uh, sharing the information on what we did uh, with AX64 in these two years. So I am uh, closing the uh, talk by introducing. Uh, uh, there's a site called Adopt OpenJDK. Uh, if you want to try uh, OpenJ9 uh, with your application, uh, you can download uh, the binaries from this site. Uh, this site uh, distributes uh, both Hotspot and OpenJ9. So uh, make sure you choose uh, OpenJ9 uh, on the right, so right side of the page. And the OpenJ9 community welcomes uh, your participation uh, to the project. Uh, there are uh, GitHub repositories uh, for OpenJ9 and OMR. Uh, you can open uh, issues and pull requests there. And if you want to uh, build OpenJ9 binaries yourself, uh, go to uh, this document uh, shown in this page. Uh, for building instructions. So uh, this is the last page. Uh, uh, wrapping, uh, to summarize, uh, OpenJ9 is another implementation of Java Virtual Machine uh, that was originally in the uh, IBM uh, Java SDK. And I and the team added uh, AX64 Linux to supported platforms of OpenJ9 after two years of work. And the main component uh, that took time uh, was the JIT compiler, uh, as I explained in this session. And again, uh, you can download and try OpenJ9 uh, by downloading uh, from Adopt OpenJDK. So uh, that's all from me uh, today. Uh, thank you for visiting uh, this session. So.
I would like to take uh, questions. And of course, questions are in Japanese. Please. Uh, I see no questions uh, in the chat and Q and A tabs. Mm. Then uh, again, uh, I'd like to thank you uh, all uh, who uh, joined this session. Okay, uh, uh, I'm stopping the broadcast now. Uh, thank you for joining. Bye.